I'm going to begin, John, just by asking what it was like directing a horror. It must be such a fun genre to, to be at the helm of, because you've got this kind of power to just play with the perceptions of, of the audience. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you, you nailed it. I think it, it, it was one of the most fun things. It's also a terrifying thing, because I think genre is also one of those things where it's a high wire act. You have to bring people from the beginning to end and sort of the, the idea of scaring people is a lot of pressure, you know what I mean? And so for me, the, the best way into it was to reverse engineer, basically, and really make it a story about something else. You know, my favorite horror movies are always the, thematically a lot about something else like Jaws or Alien, and then the, the things that scare you are just secondary, which is great. Um, so that's sort of how I went into looking at it. And then as far as directing it, it was really fun. I mean, when you, when you, even when you go location scouting and you're looking for creepy farm or like scary barn, it's a lot more fun than looking for, you know, a cute apartment for the best friend and the romantic comedy to look to, to, to be in. Yeah, I'd like to be set on a job where they just say, just find a creepy farm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually found it on Zillow, one of the real estate sites. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and because I, mean, I was reading that the original screenplay only contained one line of dialogue. Is that th true? I don't know if that's true. I mean, I think it had, uh, I think it had a couple. Um, no, maybe not. Maybe oh. there was only one line of dialogue. Well, I was going to ask you if you can remember what that line was, but since you don't even know if there was one line, I'm assuming. Yeah, I don't. I'm it. No, that's fine. But Moving on. <laughs> yeah. But I love how you take away one of horror's most vital devices. I mean, sound for me is, I think that is the most prominent aspect of, of horror, is the thing that really petrifies me. So to kind of remove it makes it even more prominent, doesn't it? I mean, that was such a great way to play around with that Thank particular you. device. Yeah, I mean, I think sound in general, we knew it would have to be a main character in this movie, um, if not the main character. And so the idea of it being a silent film, obviously it's not a silent film. It's a very, uh, there's a lot of sound in it. But the idea that the fact that the family can't talk makes it feel like a silent film. And my favorite comment that I'm getting from audiences is that it feels like an experience, not just a film, and you actually have to see it in the theaters. Obviously, any director would tell you they'd want you to see the movie in the theaters, but the fact that people are not eating their popcorn and not being able to eat their candy and things like that is, is really exciting. I mean, to me, I'm totally with you. I think that when you remove sound, it actually becomes a lot more tense than having very scary sounds and, and sort of assaulting your senses. And was it a really quiet set? I just have this idea of everyone just kind of creeping around. Cause I'd, be, <laughs> I'd be petrified to make a sound on this set. Luckily, it was a very quiet set when we were shooting, more so than I've ever experienced. Obviously, you've heard the term quiet on set for any movie. Um, but hilariously, I think our crew thought that this was a silent movie, that we just hit pause on the sound. So they made as much noise, more noise than is humanly possible. So we had to sort of find a rhythm together and realize that this is going to be a very um, a weird shoot in that we have to, you know, hear the sound of this room and all that stuff. So we, we actually had to coach the crew how to be dead silent. And how, how vital is the design of the creatures and how much... Uh did you play in that regard? I mean, I remember I loved the movie Signs. Yeah. But then yeah. I saw the aliens at the end, and it looked like sort of Matt, um, Matt Stone and Trey Parker had drawn them, and it just <laughs> took me out of it a little bit. But this, in this instance, I mean, they look terrifying. I mean, how, how involved were you in that side of things? I was very involved. I mean, it was my idea. I had all these notes and all these drawings of the creature, but to say that it, I am the reason why the creatures look so amazing is not true at all. I had the ideas and, and sort of the a backstory and evolution of why I wanted them to look the way he did. But there's a there's a little group of people called ILM, and they uh, they've done things like Star Wars and Jurassic Park. But I will say they were the most fun in my career uh, to work with was these guys. I'm such a huge nerd for everything they do. These guys and girls, and you know one of the things that's really heady and trippy still to this day is that you know we had this guy named Scott Farrar from ILM on set with us, and Scott's one of the original guys from ILM. He would just very casually at lunch say, you know. When we were doing the kitchen scene in Jurassic Park with the raptors, and I'd have to say, like, I gotta leave this conversation. I can't believe that the guy who designed the raptors is designing my creature. And just finally, I'm sure no one's mentioned the fact to you yet in this whole promotional tour that you, you were directing your wife. I'm sure that's something. No, that's no. Completely is under that my radar. Wife? Yeah. Wow. So um, I was gonna ask, I mean, I mean, obviously, when you work with someone that you're that close to, it create, everyone speaks about having this shorthand and having that closeness to your co-stars is always gonna benefit the performances. Right. But in some ways, if you're shooting a scene where say you're looking lovingly into her eyes, is it harder to see the character because you're so close to her in real life? Or do you, was it easy to always see the role and not, not Emily? Yeah, I mean, the truth of the matter is, she's so good that whatever she's doing, you're sort of drawn into regardless. But I think that, um, it was a little bit of both. I mean, I genuinely didn't see her as my wife uh, in real life. I saw her as my wife in the movie, so it was kind of a little bit of a weird overlap. People are having an anxiety attack just listening to this. They're like, what's happening? Um, but it was one of those things where I didn't see Emily. I saw this amazing character going through this. And 
I will say, I think in this case, it really helped to be married in this movie because you know you hear that spouses have a secret language, and in this movie, that's the only language we could use since there wasn't much dialogue. So I think all those glances and communicating so much with our looks was really helpful to have her in, in the movie. Brilliant. Thanks so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!